Will everyone please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you please remain standing and raise your right hand for the oath of office? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut as long as you continue a citizen thereof and that you will faithfully discharge according to law the duties as a member of the representative town meeting of the town of Greenwich to the best of your ability to so help you God? Congratulations. Item two now comes before us. Mr. Brady from District 5. Um, Madam Moderator, yes. I nominate Tom Byrne of District 6 uh, as moderator of this RTM. Second. I second the nomination. <laughs> Mr. Brady, will you just come forward, please, to do that? I must be losing my voice. <laughs> uh, I nominate Tom Byrne of District 6 as moderator of the RTM for this term. Thank you. And would you like to, uh, for the uh, secretary to cast one ballot? Work. Yes, please. Is there a second? Is there a second? <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Okay, I will entertain that the motion be closed and that the clerk, clerk cast one ballot. A motion has been made. There is a second. All in favor? Okay. All in, opposed? No. Abstentions? The motion has carried. Congratulations, Mr. Byrne. Thank you very much. Let me assure you, I do not take this position for granted. I thank you for your confidence, and I pledge to you that I will continue to work as an agent of change. I think it's important that we continue to improve what I believe is a very fine organization and a terrific asset to the town. And some of you are aware, um, I have already identified addressing attendance of members. I think that is something that uh, we will work on. We certainly are open to suggestions for change. We will continue to look for ways to use technology to better inform our members and the general public. We have led town departments in use of technology uh, with the internet and pioneering the broadcast of meetings on Channel 79, certainly uh, through large me measure the efforts of Paul Curtis. Uh, so please, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve the way we handle the business that comes before us, I am open to it and I know all of you uh, will also work to improve. So thank you very much. Item. Item three now comes before us, uh, the election of a moderator pro tem. Are there any nominations? I Mr. Tuthill, District 3. I Joan, Joan Caldwell of District 10 has been nominated. Second. And that has been seconded. Are there any further nominations for moderator pro tem? Hearing none, the nominations are closed. I'll entertain a motion that the secretary, that the clerk, cast one ballot in favor of Joan Caldwell. It has been moved and seconded that the clerk cast one ballot in favor of Joan Caldwell as moderator pro tem. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion has carried. 
Congratulations, Ms. Caldwell. All right, we do have uh, some business to take care of before we get into the remaining call items. And uh, just as an alert, the Budget Overview Committee did meet this evening, and I'm informed that it voted to withdraw item 5. Now, there will be some remarks, I know, by the chair of the Budget Overview Committee and by the chairs of two of our committees that considered item 5. So uh, after we dispose of item 4, there will be um, some further discussion regarding the nature of item 5, although uh, it will not be before us for action. Um, it has been our tradition at our organizational meeting in prior years to have the chairs of the committees and the districts come forward and simply introduce themselves and uh, the other officers. Uh, so I'd like to continue with that. Um, we'll start with the committees, why don't we, you know, do, the order doesn't matter, but if the committee chairs would please come forward and simply introduce yourselves and your vice chair and secretary. Beginning with Doug Wells, chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, um, we met last uh, Monday evening. Uh, I was um, re-elected as chairman. Mr. Didakis of District 1 is vice chairman. William Clark of District 7 is our secretary. Thank you. My name is Colleen Jenkins, and I'm chair of the Appointments Committee. Our vice chair is Wilma Nasinovich, and our secretary is Irv Porter. Hi, I'm Pam Frederick with District 1, chair of the Finance Committee, and our vice chair is Laura Erickson, District 5, and James Waba is our secretary, District 4. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Bob Brady, District 5, Chairman of the Education Committee. Barbara Hinman of District 12 was elected Vice Chairman, and Mary Jacobson of District 7 was elected Secretary. Good evening. I'm Franklin Bloomer from District uh, 5. I'm Chairman of the Land Use Committee. Uh, the other officers of the uh, Land Use Committee are the same as the officers in the last term. Peter Basilewski of District 6 is Vice Chairman. Mark Schroeder of District 1, I'm sorry, District 2 is Secretary. Thank you. I'm Jerry Isaacson, District 5 again. We seem to be lining up here. Uh, and, uh, Chairman of Health and Human Services Committee. Our vice chair is Linda DeSeif, and the secretary is Bill Brambrick. Uh, <clears throat> my predecessor as chair of Health and Human Services Committee uh, deserves some special recognition and our thanks, it seems to me. Uh, Bob Richardson has served the town and the RTM as chairman of this committee uh, over the past few years. He's not finished by any means because he remains chair of the Witherill uh, Special Committee. Bob led the Health and Human Services Committee with outstanding dedication, with integrity, with fairness, and with a sense of humor. In addition, there is no one with more in-depth knowledge of the various boards and commissions for which we provide oversight. I recently asked Bob how many uh, committee boards and commission meetings he had attended, and the only answer I got was quite a few. I think that's an understatement, and we thank Bob and look forward to many more years of service. Good evening. I'm Randall Huffman, District 7, Chairman of the Budget Overview Committee. Fred DeCaro of District 12 was re-elected as our Vice Chairman, and Christine Edwards, District 8, was re-elected as our Secretary. Thank you. I'm Greg Fruman, Chairman of Town Services from District 1. Our Secretary is Mary Ferry from District 5. And our Secretary is Carlo Cantavera from District 2. I'm Karen Sadatkan from District 6. I'm Chairman of the Parks and Rec Committee. Carol Zarelli from uh, District 1 is our Vice Chair. And Winona Mullis from District 7 is our Secretary. 
I'm Bob Kavi of District 12. I was re-elected chairman of Public Works Committee. Uh, Brian Farrow was elected as vice chairman and Dave Mellick as secretary. Uh, Brian Farrow of District 10, Dave Mellick of District 8. I'm Vince DeMarco. I was re-elected as chair of the Transportation Committee. Uh, Alan Small of, uh, of District 9, excuse me. Alan Small, District 11, as vice chair, re-elected. And also Carol DeGray of District 6, re-elected as secretary. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite our district chairs to please come forward. And uh, could you I identify and introduce the officers of your district? I'm Dean Goss of District 1. I was re-elected chairman of the district. Carl Carlson was re-elected our vice chairman, and Mary Pellegrino will serve as our secretary. I'm Kevin Brogan. I was re-elected vice chairman of District 2. Nancy Fogwell was re-elected. I'm, I'm sorry, chairman. I was Nancy Fogwell was re-elected vice chairman, and Wilma Nasinovich was re-elected secretary. Hi, I'm Bob Tuthill, Chairman of District 3. Our Vice Chairman is Louise Bavis, and our, and our, oh, excuse me, our Vice Chairman is Tom Cornelius, and our Secretary is Louise Bavis. Hello, I'm Bob McKnight, uh, Chairman of District 4. Our Vice Chairman is Linda DeSeif, and our Secretary is Frances Avery. I'm Mary Ferry, Chairman of District 5. Our new Vice Chairman is Lucy Krasner, and our new Secretary is Jennifer Dayton. Colleen Jenkins, Chair of District 6, Old Greenwich. Our Vice Chair is Michael Barnaby, and our Secretary is Claudia Keeler. Good evening. I'm Valerie Stalford, Chairman of District 7, Central Greenwich. Roger Lurie was re-elected Vice Chairman, and Rob Searle re-elected as Secretary. I'm Despina Fasiliotis. I'm Secretary of District 11. Todd Kennedy is our, was elected our Chairman, and Gina Higby, our Vice Chairman. Good evening. My name is Rick Crowell. I was re-elected as Chairman of District 8. Serving with me will be Jim Boutel as our Vice Chair and renominated as our Secretary, Susie Anderson. Thank you. I'm Joan Caldwell, District 10. I was re-elected Chairman, Jerry Anderson, re-elected Vice Chairman, and Swan Grant is our Secretary. I'm Betsy Fruman, Chairman of District 9. Our Vice Chairman is Vince DeMarco, and our Secretary is Adele Rhoda. And I want you all to know that District 9 has a full house, finally. <laughs> I'm Bob May, Chairman of District 12. Our Vice Chairman is Robert Perry, and our Secretary is Fred DeCaro. Thank you all very much. Uh, Peter Crumbine, our Selectman. Good evening. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you, Mr. Moderator, and to the Moderator Pro Tem. Uh, you're in good hands. Uh, I'm Peter Crumbine, District 11. Uh, I'm here to announce that uh, Mary Ferry is stepping down as one of the representatives to SWARPA. Um, and anybody who's interested um, in taking her place should get a resume either to me or to the Selectman's Office, uh, Paula Belmont. Um, if you are interested, I've got some good news and some bad news. The, the good news is that the representative to Swerpa must come from the RTM, so that kind of limits the competition a little bit to 230-some people. However, um, word has gotten out already, and we have three very strong candidates who have already raised their hands. So if you are interested, by all means, send me your resume. Thank you. Thank you. And Homer Reese has some good information for us. Homer representing the Bruce Museum and recently a retired member of this body from District 11. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. 
My name is Homer Reese and I'm treasurer of the Bruce Museum. And no, I'm not here to ask for money, but rather to invite you on behalf of Peter Sutton, executive director, to a special viewing on Thursday, February 23rd of our major winter exhibition entitled Ben Franklin's Curious Mind. Now we all know who Ben Franklin was and that this year is the 300th anniversary of his birth. I'm also sure most of you know that he invented the lightning rod and bifocals, but you may be less aware that among his many other innovations were rudimentary swim fins, maps of the Gulf Stream, and the, the first mechanical glass harmonica, an intriguing instrument for which even Mozart and Beethoven composed music. All this and lots more will be on display, so please join us on February 23rd. Invitations will be in the mail shortly, and spouses are welcome. All we ask is that you let us know whether or not you're coming, so we can be sure to have enough refreshments on hand. We look forward to seeing you at the Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. So that's February 23rd, is that? That's the date. Good. Mark that on your calendars. Colleen Jenkins, Chair of our Appointments Committee. The Appointments Committee takes care of 150 positions in town government. Most of them are nominated uh, or filled by nomination by the Board of Selectmen. But there is a whole another set that the Appointments Committee takes care of for you, the RTM. And there are two standing committees that are um, vacant right now, um, although they continue until replaced. They serve for two years. It's the Claims Committee and the uh, Labor Contracts Committee. Uh, I'm going to ask Tom Byrne to describe the work of the Labor, uh, sorry, the Claims Committee. And there are nine people, including the moderator, automatically. Okay, the Claims Committee, um, by our rule, is chaired by the moderator, and in addition, there are nine RTM members who are nominated by the Appointments Committee and appointed by the RTM. And we like to uh, get that in place as early as possible in the term so that we can deal and have a full slate of committee members to deal with any uh, claims that need to be resolved against the town. In fact, we had a meeting tonight to resolve a claim. Uh, the Claims Committee is unlike any other of our committees. It is a special committee, but it is a committee that has been delegated the authority to act on behalf of the RTM. What it does is actually appropriate money to settle claims, pay judgments against the town. Uh, now, typically, that comes after approval by the Board of Selectmen and the BET. But it, uh, it, it's a committee that requires, we'll put it this way, uh, we prefer that the members have some experience in litigation and or risk assessment, risk management in the insurance end of things, uh, but able to evaluate the value of a claim, the liability and the damages in a uh, pending litigation. So many of the members currently are lawyers, but you don't have to be a lawyer. Uh, and what we ask is that anyone who is interested, please forward your name and resume to Colleen Jenkins, and the Appointments Committee will contact you and arrange for an interview in the next several weeks. Uh, a good way to contact me is uh, by email, and other, I'm also in the phone book, but I've put my email address here, and it will remain here during the night, so anytime you want to come and pick it up, it's fine. The second standing committee is the Labor Contracts Committee, and I would like to ask Joan Caldwell to talk about it. The Labor Contracts Committee is a special committee of the RTM which is charged with the examination and analysis of all proposed settlements, collective bargaining settlements, between the town, that is the Board of Education and the First Selectmen, and the respective unions that report to them. 
The committee is also charged with reviewing personnel policies, com compensation practices and procedures, the contributions and the benefits received from the pension programs, performance evaluation, and the functioning of the classification plan. It's a very big plateful. Largely, we concentrate on collective bargaining, however. The committee is small. It is not intended to be geographically representative of the town, but rather to be made up of people who have expertise in collective bargaining. And we differentiate that as from human resources or what most of us come to think of as personnel. Personnel and human resources are the result of the collective bargaining procedure. It is nice to have that kind of knowledge, but we really need people who have had some experience with labor negotiations. The committee meets on an irregular basis as needed. Uh, we have a meeting coming up very shortly because there is a proposed settlement of a contract that will be coming to the town meeting in March. This is a very sensitive area. The material and information given to the Labor Contracts Committee is confidential. It would be disastrous for the town if it were to leak out to the wrong people, and so therefore we try to keep what we know to a small group of people. And as I said, it's a specialized area. One of the things that has made the committee work well in the past is the fact that it is small, we know each other well, and we are able to work with the town's first, with the town's first selectmen and with the Board of Education in developing long-term strategies. We try to help them determine where the town wants to be six or eight years from now and how we're going to get to that point. Anyone interested in serving on this committee with a labor background or that kind of expertise should contact the Appointments Committee. Now, I would like to mention one other thing, if I may, Mr. Moderator. Over the years, the Labor Contracts Committee has tried to meet periodically with members of the town meeting. We've just held an open meeting. The last time we did this was about eight or ten years ago. And for two meetings in succession, the committee was present, but no members of town meeting came. So we didn't hold any others. I think that there has been a sufficient turnover in the RTM so that there maybe are a lot of new members who have questions or ideas or concerns and would like to express them to us. Therefore, we are going to meet with you or meet with anyone that's interested on Tuesday, February 21st. Mark the date. It'll be noticed in the Maza room at 6.30. We will be dealing with a proposed settlement that night and will stay to meet with any of you that would like to talk with us. So in conclusion, uh, that was five members plus two alternates to the Labor Contracts Committee. Once again, I've left my email here and I'd appreciate hearing of your interest. Can I just say one final thing about SWERPA? SWERPA is an acronym for Southwestern Regional Planning Association agency um, and so um, and that can be found on any website um, for background information thank you thank you Peter Tessie chair of the BET good evening mr. moderator ladies and gentlemen of the RTM congratulations on your taking the oath this evening I'm here tonight to distribute two items you will find resourceful as members of the RTM the first is a BET membership directory and calendar of our meetings. It includes the full board meetings, the committee meetings, as well as the calendar you received in December from Val Storms, the former chair of the budget committee regarding this year's budget process, which kicks off uh, next week. Um, Steve Walco is the new chairman of the uh, budget committee and is looking forward to working with many of you as the budget unfolds. The second document is the town annual report for the period of July 1, 2004 through June 30, 2005, and it is produced by the town finance department, and the contents are provided by the various town departments and appointing authorities. I want to thank Val Storms, who was responsible for looking at the uh, 
content, the grammar, I should say, not the content of the report. She put some time into that. So I think you'll find these documents useful to you as you embark on your tenure, and we look forward to working with uh, each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe the last item before we get into the remaining call items, Vince DeMarco. We always wanted to save transportation for last. So, <laughs> Chair of our Transportation Committee, Vince DeMarco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm here to report on a special meeting that we held this evening. Um, and, we, and we called this special meeting because there was information that we learned after the last um, standing committee's meetings of the RTM. As a matter of fact, the following morning, um, I happen to be a, a, a member along with uh, Carol Ducre, who has been a member for 10 years on the parking and selectman's parking and traffic committee. and. Uh, we attended that meeting the following morning and uh, were presented the final report of the um, study to the feasibility study to to determine where we would build a public parking facility downtown in the CBD. Um, so what we were concerned about is this that that the committee was presented the, the, the report and a recommendation of the most feasible location for that parking study. We have already funded um, a $690,000 appropriation for the design and engineering of that facility. Now the Parking and Traffic Committee is awaiting further information before they will go ahead and make a recommendation whether or not to the Board of Select and whether or not to build that facility. A positive recommendation from the Parking and Traffic Committee and affirmative vote by the Board of Selectmen shortly thereafter, which could occur in February, will entitle the first Selectman to release the funds for the design and engineering of that facility. We don't meet again until March, and by that time, this could all be in the works. The RTM Transportation Committee has kept abreast of this project and other recommendations of the 2002 Desmond Parking Study, which produced a deficit or indicated a deficit of 230 spaces in the downtown district in 2002. It's also kept an eye on the recommendations of the 2002 CBD Traffic Management Study and the actions of the Selectmen's Committees, Advisory Committees, and the current CBD improvement initiatives. But it has not seen any concerted effort to meld the recommendations of all of these studies into a comprehensive plan. And at present, the town has no trained staff available that could be assigned that task. We recognize the concern over rapidly escalating construction costs, and we understand the timeline developed by this administration to uphold a promise. However, the $690,000 design and engineering funding could be wasted without an approved comprehensive plan or the objectives of one to guide it. Our concern is not the cost at this point because we know that the RTM will deal with the overall cost of this proposed project at the appropriate time. It's not even the timeline itself. It is the fact that the RTM, residents, the business community, and even the parking and traffic committee itself has yet to see this comprehensive long-term plan that integrates the recommendations of the recent individual studies, and you know there have been many studies over the years, of parking and also of traffic in the Central Business District that's consistent with the plan of conservation and development and that assures that any new parking structures will meet the goals and objectives in the Central Business District. So. It's the consensus of the committee this evening, and, and many of you may have picked up a, a proposed sense of the meeting resolution out on the table. The committee decided that it would not ask to propose that sense of the meeting resolution this evening. However, it did come to consensus that we feel, that the committee feels, and, and of course this is the information we want to give to you, is that we feel that this should be a well noticed public hearing, which would be an opportunity for, as we say, the residents, the RTM, the business community, and of course agencies, other agencies, other bodies of the town itself. There should be this 
public hearing held at a convenient time prior to the release of the design and engineering funds for the public parking facility for the express purpose of affirming that this facility will be designed and built as an integral part of a master plan to preserve and improve operations within the central business district and further that an outline of the plan be presented for approval by the RTM along with any request for the construction funds for this facility you recognize that there is a, a second public hearing on the CIP process tomorrow night chances are um, well, I shouldn't say chances are, there is a possibility that the construction funds will be placed in the parking fund uh, or the request for the construction funds will be placed in the parking fund in the 0607 budget and it may be discussed tomorrow night. We don't, seem, we don't feel that there's any, any issue really with this timeline. We, we recognize that the timeline is necessary if we're going to get this project built, but it really would be great if, if the RTM could comment understand what the parking structure was going to do for our town, for our downtown for many, many years and have an opportunity to buy into this and support the project if it, if it feels it really is necessary. Thank you. All right, and I apparently neglected Mr. Richardson to report on the Special Committee on Nathaniel Witherell. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. First, may I extend my thanks to my colleague, Jerry Isaacson, for his very kind remarks. Uh, I appreciate them very much. Secondly, uh, insofar as the Special Committee on Nathaniel Witherell is concerned, I was elected to be the guinea pig to continue this operation, and uh, Fred DeCaro is the assistant guinea pig as vice chairman, and Steve Soler is triple as the secretary. In any case, uh, Mr. Moderator and ladies and gentlemen, as most of you are aware, the Nathaniel Witherell Board has submitted its long-range plan 2006, and that plan is now posted on the Nathaniel Witherell section of the town's website. On November 30th, the Special Committee received a slide presentation of the executive summary of that plan, along with hard copies for review by members. On January 5th, the committee had an extended discussion of the plan with Don Fritz, who is chairman of the Finance Committee of Witherell, and some other Witherell directors. Just to be clear, and without any criticism whatsoever, the plan is not the type of business plan called for in the sense of the meeting resolution adopted by the RTM in September 2004 because it does not deal with the construction and operation of a new nursing home. Rather, this plan is an assessment of four options for managing this enterprise in the difficult circumstances of the Connecticut nursing home industry. It is also a delineation of key strategies required to implement one of those options, that is the preferred option three, which is a combination plan to enhance revenues, immediately restructure costs, and invest, make some investment in facilities. The Special Committee has reviewed the plan carefully and has made comments and posed a number of questions to the Board which will be included in our own report which will be posted on the RTM website. This evening, I think it is sufficient to say that we agree with the Board that the merits of implementing a plan to ensure the long-term viability of Witherell are strong. We largely agree on the merits of option three, including pursuing certain revenue management and cost restructuring initiatives as a prelude to determining a building proposal. <coughs> These initiatives, in our view, must be undertaken as soon as possible and their successful implementation realized if Witherell is to be preserved for our community. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Mr. Boutel, please state your point of information. Uh, 
I've taken no action in this term, uh, being that I was just elected tonight. I intend to continue the life of the special committee given the importance of the issue that the committee is charged with reviewing. We'll, we'll report to you in March or sooner, if appropriate, as to what action will be taken. But for now, the committee, uh, my intention is to have a special committee devoted to looking at developments regarding Nathaniel Witherell, so that the sense of the meeting resolution that was adopted by this body last term is uh, developments are reported back to us uh, and we can take informed action at the appropriate time. All right. That now brings us to item number four on the call. Oh, thank you. Mr. Clark, yes. We do need to take care of our minutes. Well, um, as all members have received a copy of the minutes of our December meeting, the reading of the minutes will be omitted. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Mr. Clark, do you have any suggested corrections? I have none. I just wanted to be sure it got on the agenda and move that we adopt the uh, minutes as they were presented to us with the call. Okay, well, that's, that is what we are doing at the moment. Thank you. Hearing no suggested changes to the minutes. The minutes as submitted stand adopted upon unanimous consent. Are there any other housekeeping details we need to attend to? All right, that now brings us to item number four on the call. That now comes before us. May we have the resolution on that item? Who is presenting? Mr. Goss? I am presenting. As Dean, a member of the committee. Dean Goss, a member of the Hamilton Avenue <coughs> School Building Committee. The resolution being presented is identical with that in the call asking for an additional $2,700,000 for the Hamilton Avenue School. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item four has been moved and seconded. Bob Brady with the report of our Education Committee. Good evening. Uh, the Education Committee met a long time ago, two weeks, uh, to consider this item. Uh, Mr. Frank Mazza uh, assisted us. We met jointly with the uh, Finance Committee and the Land Use Committee, got to sit, sit in and, and, uh, and watch and listen to our deliberations. Um, as Mr. Goss said, this is a $2.7 million uh, interim appropriation for the Hamilton Avenue Building Committee. Uh, we were alerted to this last spring uh, as the $21 million appropriated last May uh, was, we were told then, uh, too low. And uh, this additional about $3 million uh, at that time was indicated would be needed. Uh, with this $2.7 million, it will bring the total appropriated for the Hamilton Avenue School uh, to $2.7 uh, well, million, $27,110,000. Million I get the decimal in the right place. Um, and Mr. Mazza indicated that about another $1.8 million would be required to complete the uh, structure, including its outfitting, uh, bringing the total to just shy of $29 million. Uh, they are uh, on a tight schedule, uh, but still on schedule to complete in time for a September 2007 opening. Uh, the purpose of these funds is uh, primarily to deal with uh, garage costs, which were left out of the, uh, or parking costs left out of the original estimate, uh, about $600,000 additional for rock removal. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the Hamilton Avenue site knows it's up on the top of a hill, which is very hard stuff underneath. Uh, it also uh, incorporates a 3.5% escalator over the uh, 
uh, the next, uh, well, over the two years uh, remaining. Uh, there is some concern uh, as to whether that is enough, given other recent experience. Um, the, uh, the bids are out for the uh, uh, construction, and uh, it is expected to be brought in on time, as I said earlier. Uh, our recommendation on this was uh, 1200 to approve this uh, appropriation. Thank you. Thank you. Pamela Frederick, Chair of our Finance Committee. Hi. Uh, the Finance Committee met on uh, January 7th. All districts were present. Um, I think we've uh, had everything covered. Uh, the only other point um, I would make is that we were told the, uh, there was a reduction in cost of two and a half million, and uh, that brought it down to a total of about 29 million as a, the, in, the, the total cost that was originally estimated at 21 million and um, it's now approximately 29, 29 million. Uh, we've covered also um, the fact that there were two uh, separate appropriations done, I'm sorry, one appropriation done in December 04 and two separate budget items, 860,000 and the 0405 budget and the 21 million was budgeted in the 0506 budget. Thanks. The vote for the committee was 1100, District 7 was absent. Thank you. Robert Cavie with the report of our Public Works Committee. The Public Works Committee discussion on item four was supported by Frank Mazza, chairman of the Hamilton Avenue School Building Committee. The $2.7 million required in item four is in large part the result of a deficiency in the educational specifications for the new Hamilton Avenue School. The educational specifications called for an improved and enlarged school on what is today considered a substandard site. The school foot footprint has been expanded and additional parking requirements were added. All playing field space was retained. The specification did not provide for a parking garage. During the early preliminary design the numbers didn't add up and it became obvious that a subterranean level of garage space had to be constructed. And I point out subterranean garage space because that was an issue for item five. This required extensive rock excavation under the original ground level parking lot. Early on, prior to the appropriation uh, for school construction, the BET was apprised of the requirement of about three million in additional funds which are now being requested as an interim appropriation. The Public Works Committee voted 11 in favor, none opposed, and no abstentions with District 4 absent for the $2.7 million appropriation as on the call for item four. Thank you. Discussion on item four. Richard Holleran, District 1. Mr. Moderator, Richard Holleran, District 1, I rise to implore that we deny the additional funds for the construction of the underground garage at Hamilton Avenue School. The building committee of this school, in addition to other errors of commission and omission, went ahead willy-nilly with a project of an underground garage in the face of the fact that they would have expensive, they would have expensive excavations in solid rock and above all in the face of the other fact that there was already sufficient parking in the original ground configuration for the needs of the school's faculty. On, and now this committee comes begging uh, to the taxpayers of Greenwich to foot the bill for their inadequate preparations of the details of this project, of a project that never should have been started in the first place. On January 10th of 2005, Dr. Carl Carlson of District 1 and myself toured with the school's principal, the Hamilton Avenue School, and were told by her that the parking, the then existing parking, was adequate for the entire faculty and staff. Uh, 
there has been uh, constant innuendos uh, and falsifications of needs uh, at this school. Uh, one of the uh, things certainly was the continual bombardment of the public here of the presumed fact that the school was infested with uh, fungus. And this is uh, another typical uh, misinformation that we have been given. The school principal at the time of our, our uh, tour told us that less than one square yard of one wall of a, had been infested with fungus. This area had been removed and replaced so that the entire structure was now, oh, was at that time, mold free. Uh, the Hamilton Avenue School in collegiate Gothic style and what was a distinguished presence uh, it was with its pristine condition 1938 gymnasium, so useful for maintaining and encouraging physical fairness, uh, physical fitness in our youngsters. What a shame that our section of Chickahominy should be so affronted that it was deemed unworthy of maintaining in its, mo in its midst the most esteemed school building in our town. It is only the tip of the iceberg that threatens to spiral with more and more cost overruns, uh, not just this underground garage. The whole project will be viewed by many as a make-work event for a construction firm of dubious provenance and their local co-conspirators who do not have the interests of the town at heart. I do suggest most sincerely that we deny these funds. Further discussion on item four. Mr. Tuthill, District 3. Mr. Moderator, um, I think there's some misinformation here. Uh, as was said by Mr. Kavi, and I want to point it out, this is the smallest school site in acreage in town. And before the school was closed down, they still were tight on parking. So in many cases, they parked across the street in a lot that was owned by St. Rock's Church uh, at the corner of Stone and diagonally across the street from the, from the school. Uh, that really isn't something we can count upon. And the, school is, the, the new school is larger, which means that we not only had inadequate parking before, but we will have much more inadequate parking. That's why we need the lower parking deck there for it. Uh, I think that uh, you got a lot of bad information there. This is, and it shouldn't be blamed at all on the, on the building committee, who has done, I think, a magnificent job. And Mr. Mazza would be here to defend himself, except that thinking that the meeting was last week, he's on vacation. But I would ask you to disregard what was just said. Further discussion on item four. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, item number four, and proceed to pull your delegation. Now, as I reported earlier, uh, item five will not be presented to us for action tonight, but there were uh, three committee chairs who asked to be recognized to comment on item five. Beginning with Randall Huffman, chair of our budget overview committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyone who was not here in time to be sworn in at the beginning of the meeting, before you vote, could you uh, come forward and the town clerk will swear you in? Mr. Huffman. Good evening again. Well, here we are six days later than we thought we'd be here, and a little worse for wear. The town has suffered a lot in the last few days, and I know a lot of people have been without the services and the utilities that they expect, but I think that from what I've seen going around the town and the amount of damage that was done by the windstorms, that we really need to uh, salute and applaud the employees of the town, the public uh, works department personnel, the uniform service personnel, and indeed the utilities that serve this town 
for the work that they have done in getting services back to people, taking care of the crisis of blocked roads and the rest, be because there's been a tremendous amount that had to be done. And I, I think we owe them all a debt of gratitude. I know that people have been brought in as, from as far away as even Michigan to help uh, with the effort to get things back the way they should. Thank you. Now on to the item. I'm pleased to report that all the members of the BOC and David Malik survived the ambush of January 9th. And the BOC met tonight and adopted a resolution to withdraw item five from consideration by the RTM this evening. But in so doing and reporting that to you, I want to thank the members of the BOC for the considerable effort that they put in over these past few months in preparing materials, reviewing materials, and seeking to have a more comprehensive review of this project. And I particularly want to thank David Mellick for the work that he has done in designing a vision of an alternative for the downtown business district in Greenwich. As I said, the BOC moved to withdraw item five. And absent further action by the RTM, there will not be a substantive review that I'm aware of of the site for the safety complex, the design of the complex, the cost of the complex, the effect of the complex on the central business district, or the actual value of the site where this, uh, where this complex will be located. You earlier heard that the Transportation Committee is particularly concerned that there be further review of the proposals for the construction of large multi-tiered parking structures in the central business district as well. What I think we've concluded from the process that we went through was that we do need to have the RTM involved in particular review of major capital projects as early in the process as we possibly can, with that review continuing to and through the process of planning and design. And I will continue with the BOC to work toward a procedure that will better ensure that the RTM can get that information. As many of you may be aware, there have been proposals now that we have discussed over a period of time that others have brought forth, and I commend those proposals to your study and review for a, a comprehensive approach to the issue of the capital improvement budget and capital projects. I think we're already seeing that the proposed capital improvement budget that was put forth a year ago will already be substantially increased by the time it is brought to us for its next installment in this May budget cycle. And I would again urge all of you to attend tomorrow night the public hearing on the CIP capital budget for this next year. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Brady, Chair of our Education Committee. After we met uh, to hear the discussion on item five two weeks ago, uh, the Education Committee adjourned back to, its, uh, to the Hayton Room to discuss the item. Uh, we uh, 
I won't go into the discussion and the substance of, of that piece of it since that's off the table. But uh, out, of the, out of the discussion, out of the, uh, the sense of the meeting resolution having been brought forward, the committee asked that uh, I bring several comments of the committee forward to the RTM. Uh, first, the, the Education Committee believes that the RTM needs to improve its own internal processes uh, as to how it deals with large uh, major maintenance and capital projects. I think that's an echo of what Randy just said. Uh, Second, I think we need more transparency from the project sponsors uh, earlier on in the projects so that we can see what they are, uh, their costs, their conception, where, how they work, one thing or another. Uh, I think in the example of the, of the safety complex, while that uh, has been in the works for a number of years, we all know that, uh, it actually only rather suddenly uh, burst upon us, only in the last six, eight, four months, three months, uh, depending upon uh, how you look at it. Uh, and it's the committee's uh, contention that we need to see more earlier from the part, on the part of the sponsors. Finally, again echoing uh, the Budget over Overview Committee and Randy, uh, the Education Committee wants to thank David Mellick for the work he did. Uh, I think it, uh, some of us have a an inkling of the amount of time he spent, and certainly the amount of effort and uh, will uh, he put into bringing that project forward. Uh, I personally thank him, and the edu Education Committee does, and I hope you all will as well. Thank you. Thank you. Franklin Bloomer, Chair of our Land Use Committee. Uh, good evening again. Uh, uh, my remarks uh, will, uh, to, to a certain extent, re uh, reflect those uh, of the last two speakers, but uh, I'd like to go back uh, to uh, two weeks ago uh, tonight when there was a joint meeting among uh, four RTM committees, the Land Use Committee, the Education Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Public Works Committee. Uh, many of you were there. Uh, I had the privilege to chair that meeting because it was held in my committee's uh, regularly assigned conference room. It was an extremely well-attended meeting. There was standing room only. Not only were there many of you there, but uh, there were many members of the public. This, this was, in effect, a public hearing on the public safety complex. The four committees that participated in that meeting uh, adjourned to their respective assigned uh, meeting rooms and voted uh, separately. Uh, our vote, the Land Use Committee's vote, was unanimously uh, against uh, item five. But we then went on to adopt a separate resolution which I would like to, to read to you. This was adopted by a nine to two vote. Resolved that the RTM Land Use Committee thanks the following for their contributions to the consideration by the RTM of the proposed public safety complex, which uh, contributions uh, were within the best tradition of our town's citizen participation in government. One, the Budget Overview Committee for the work of its downtown redevelopment working group and its sponsorship of item five on the call of the representative town meeting, originally scheduled for last week. Two, David Mellick for his development of a strategic concept for, the down, for downtown Greenwich and his construction of a model incorporating his concept. And three, our first selectman, James A. Lash, for providing much of the information requested in the resolution in item five to the members of the RTM in advance of the meeting. A word about each of those three thank yous. Uh, our thanks to the BOC were pro for providing the context and the occasion for a public debate on the public safety complex. Uh, <clears throat> this project began as a long overdue uh, replacement of an inadequate police headquarters, but it evolved over time. Uh, it's now called the public safety complex, a name that reflects the fact that it, isn't, it is now more than just a police headquarters. This body was asked to appropriate funds at various stages uh, as this project went forward 
and the selectmen certainly did nothing uh, to keep its plans from public view, but nonetheless, the plans, as they evolved, were not well understood by the public. The, uh, the BOC provided the occasion for uh, a, a thorough review uh, at which this body, as representative of the public, uh, I think learned a great deal and, and got a lot more comfortable with uh, uh, what was happening. Our resolution uh, thanks David Mellick because he attempted to bring together several recognized needs of the town into a more comprehensive plan. In addition to replacement of the police headquarters, his proposal addressed the needs for, one, uh, additional parking in the central business district, two, the Board of Education's move from the Havemeyer building to more suitable space, and three, the development of open space uh, between Town Hall and the Senior Center into more of a town green, all of which, all three of which, are uh, presently under consideration by the town as separate projects. What we have, in effect, have is a, is a series of projects which are being looked at uh, in the downtown area as separate projects, all in the absence of a long-term plan uh, that seeks to bring these various uh, uh, projects together. And that's what Ma David Mellick attempted to do. Uh, our resolution thanks the first selectman for his contribution to the debate. His mailing to all of us immediately before the January 9 joint meeting did not provide all of the information the BOC sought, but together with facts that he uh, brought out at the joint meeting, he provided enough information to result in consistent voting by all of the committees that, cons that considered item five. It might nonetheless have been better had that uh, information been provided sooner because it would have been possible uh, to give the information that he provided uh, uh, more time to, to consider it and it also might have avoided something of the sense of confrontation that existed with, with item five. The consideration of item five by the RTM committees may end the debate on whether the selectman's pro, uh, proposal should be shelved in favor of some other proposal. But that debate was desirable and I think it had the right result. But the debate should continue in the context of achieving more effective planning uh, for the town not just for the central business district, but the whole town. Good planning involves citizen input and the adoption uh, of a formal plan, which is one of the factors that uh, Vince DeMarco mentioned earlier on. There will be uh, a lot of citizen input and formal adoption when uh, the new plan of conservation and development, which the Planning and Zoning Commission is required to produce by 2008, uh, is prepared and brought before us for adoption. But a new plan, uh, uh, of conservation and development uh, uh, should be a lot more specific in its goals than the existing plan. But that's another subject. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also, before I report the vote on item four, I also would like to thank uh, those who broadcast this meeting to the town. Uh, Paul Curtis, of course, leads that effort. Tonight he's joined by John Mote, uh, and I can just say this whole process begins early in the afternoon. Uh, Paul sent around the schedule, and they begin around 5 o'clock, if not a little earlier, in mobilizing the equipment, organizing, and setting up. And it continues uh, after you are already home as they pack up. So it really is a, a thankless job. It's a behind-the-scenes job, but uh, more and more people are commenting to me that they are watching not only this meeting but all the other meetings that are broadcast and the other programming and it's just an, a, an excellent uh, informative resource for us all. So thank you gentlemen very much. All right, the vote on item four, which was the appropriation for the Hamilton Avenue reconstruction. Those in favor, 157. Opposed, 10. Abstaining, 10. That item has carried. Uh, there being no further business to come before us at this meeting, although, as we've heard tonight, uh, we have significant work ahead of us this term, so let's all work together to meet the challenge. Thank you all for coming. Meeting now stands adjourned.